On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have a preview of the March glossy edition of the Fishman Magazine. We have the winner of last week's photo contest. Correspondent Mike Dean meets up with Paul McCain to seek a new challenge and try out fly fishing. We have upcoming events and our correspondents check in from around the island, all here at thefisherman.com. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. The Long Island Boat and Fishing Show is back at the Nassau Coliseum, March 10th through the 12th. Long Island's best boat and tackle dealers will be there with huge savings. From fishing boats and tackle to personal watercraft and the latest electronics, this show has it all. Children will enjoy free face painting, and on Saturday and Sunday, the first 100 kids get a free life vest. Free parking all weekend, and Friday is Heroes Day. Free admission for first responders and military. Visit nyboatshows.com for all the details. Today is Thursday the 23rd and the March glossy issue of the Fisherman Magazine is in the mail and now on newsstands. This is the time of the year when most of the action is freshwater. Check out Rowan Whittle's read on visual clues when targeting freshwater species. Dave Anderson has another plug building article, this time on the glide bait. The right light source is essential when fishing at night. This article has some great tips from Larry Welcome. Connectquat is a gem on Long Island, and Mark Sadati has what you need to know. Stay tuned. Later in the broadcast, when Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters and Mike Dean hit the Connectquat River. All this and more in the March glossy edition of the Fisherman Magazine. Now let's check on the upcoming events. Next week, Saturday, March 4th, is the Ward Melville High School Saltwater Seminar and Fundraiser. There's free admission, and it's a great show, so you better check it out. The Long Island Boat Show comes to town March 10th through the 12th. Also that same weekend is the Lindenhurst Flea Market. And out east on Sunday the 12th is the 8th Annual Fisherman's Flea Market sponsored by the Sag Harbor Fire Department. And for all you tuna enthusiasts out there, Canyon Runner will be holding their tuna seminar on March 4th at Captain Bill's in Bay Shore. Visit thefisherman.com slash events for all the details. The Babylon Fisherman's Flea Market is now better than ever in its new location. The American Legion, 22 Grove Place, Babylon. Save the date, Sunday, March 19th, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Over 50 tables with new and used fishing gear. Store prizes every hour. Get your fishing questions answered by the Pro Roundtable. Get all the details at FishermanFleaMarket.com. In other news, mark your calendars because there will be a public hearing on February 27th to decide on the final 2023 regulations on sea bass for New York State. I strongly urge that you do get involved and attend this meeting in person or through the online portal. See the link in the description for all the details. Hey, thanks to everyone that sent in your photos again last week. This week's winner is Jackson Gandarell with his surf coach striper. He wins some Berkeley Wars, soft baits from Savage, and mini bucktails from Spro. Keep watching, we will have more giveaways in the future. The Fisherman Magazine has launched their apparel store, hats, sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts, all online now, and free shipping with orders over 100 bucks. It's the perfect gift for yourself or the angler in your life. Visit thefisherman.com slash shop or click on the card in the upper right. Still not much going on around the island in the salt, but the tidal rivers are still hosting a decent white perch bite with small stripers mixed in. Connectquat and Carmen's are two good ones to try out. I snuck out to a lake in the Patchogue area and caught some pickerel using small Kitech paddle tails with white tackle. I also did hear Bubbles Falls and Upper Lake and Yapang had a good shot at trout early in the week with baits like night crawlers and lures like small spinners and cast masters. I did get word that the walleye on a night bite in Ron Conkmo has been pretty good with suspending rapalas and larger paddle tail sheds. Hey, I have a breaking news report for you guys. The King Cod out of Mauritius had about 65 keeper cod on Wednesday for 20 anglers. They've been fishing out east fairly close to the beach. They're fishing again this Saturday and Sunday. Check out their Facebook or give them a call for reservations. Fly fishing at the Connect Quad seems to be the most consistent fishing this time of the year. Producer Tim C. Smith hit the river with Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters and Mike Dean, where Mike takes on the new challenge of fly fishing. So, Mike, this is all, uh, you know, fly fishing is, people have a misconception about fly fishing. One, they think that it's expensive, and two, they think it's difficult. And it's not expensive, not any more than any other fishing, right? 
and it's not difficult, it's different. Once you get the basics mechanics down, it, you'll find that it's just incredibly enjoyable. In my opinion, most times it's not the most productive method, but it's, in my opinion, it's always the most enjoyable method. All right, well, enough talking, let's get at it. Now you have to be really fired up for <laughs> oh, this. Oh, you're gonna enjoy this. You're really gonna enjoy All this. Right. We're gonna start, just go a little bit, and I'll show you where the casting, and casting is important. So then, here we go. So, basically, on this, it's not muscle. You're a big guy. You're not, you're not throwing three, pound, three ounce jigs are out there. This is all about, you're casting the line. The flies are weightless, so you have to, and the line is tapered. You can feel how this line is thin here, and it gets thicker, thicker, thicker. It's, oh, you're transferring yeah. the energy. It's all about timing. You want this rod to just, you want to load it and release. You want to have line out. You need the weight on the line is out to load the rod, and it's all about the timing, right? All about the timing. So you pick it up. Stop. See, you can just see how that is. What you're doing is you're starting here. When you get to your back stroke, you're going to do a little snap. See how that angle opens up? Not this, okay. this. And then when you come bring it forward, you're going to snap it forward. See how my timing? Stop, 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 stop. So start low. And just come up, stop right about here, uh -huh. then come back, stop here. See how that rolls out? See how that rolls out? Yeah, I think you, I think you can catch fish now. I'm ready. <laughs> so Mike, this is the, I wear the same gear in fresh or salt water. The breathable waders are the way to go. I don't wear neoprenes anymore. I use these all year long. As long as you layer up underneath, you're going to have no problems. Okay. I do like I, I do like what they these are called stocking foot waders. Yeah, I and the reason why I like them, ankle support. You know, I don't like boot-footed waders. There's no ankle support. So one of the most important things, equipment that you could have, is actually glasses, sunglasses. I like sunglasses, but you should have glasses to see the fish, but more importantly, to for safety. Because when you're fly fishing, or any any fishing really, the wind could you know bring that hook right into your eye, and you only got two of them. So <laughs> it's really really important to protect yourself. And you know, fishing's not dangerous, but there is there are risks involved. Okay, let's get in the river and catch us some of these trout. All right, sounds good. Yeah. Let's do it. You want to cast it and let it just land, just like that. All right. Right. We're going to fish this whole section here. Work your way up. Oop. Fish came up. Oop. Got him. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Got him. Yeah. I, I get so excited with it. So I'm fishing through you. <laughs> okay, don't reel it up anymore. Okay. All right, you don't want to pull the line, just pull it back and I'll net them. Hey, it's a small little brookie. It's a brook trout, but it's, hey, they're all good fish. So see how I'm just dropping it? Immediately catching, right? Oop, there you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And now I'm no, don't reel it in, no? just pull it. Just pull it. Oh, okay. All right, just pull it. That way you don't have to fight, pull the line out again. Keep the rod tip just about right that, like that. That's good. This is a much bigger fish. This is a brookie also. We'll get a picture of you guys. Okay, don't pull it in anymore. Okay. That's all right. Bring it up towards me, behind behind me. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Look at this. Okay, we got to get a picture of this guy with you. Right? Now I'll hold this. You reach down. Pull them up. Excellent. Look at me, Mike. Oh, excellent. Woohoo! It went right over their heads. Yeah, oh, 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 oh. oh got him. You see that? Good, 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 good. Good fish, good fish. 
Okay, don't pull it too far. All right, grab her, reach up here. Okay, okay. Just bring, bring the rod tip over top. It's a, it's a brookie. No, it's a, maybe, it's a rainbow. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's running downstream. They're a little more. Got him, woo -hoo! There you go. Nice fish. And you did it. <laughs> you did it. You know, I really enjoyed guiding. Uh, and mostly uh, what I like about it is I get so excited watching the newbies catching, catching their first trout or their first fish on a fly rod. And you know what? I take, I'll go out guiding on different, for different fish. I like doing saltwater and freshwater. But to take somebody new and let them catch their first fish on a fly is just so exciting. I'm catching fish through them. And that was a complete disaster as I expected. And, you know, little by little and just trusting what Paul was saying, um, as hard as it might be with what, you know, being used to being a spin, you know, surf caster guy, um, all of a sudden it worked. Got a, got a couple of fish, a couple of rainbow trout, uh, or I guess a couple of brook trout and, and a rainbow trout. And uh, just, you know, pretty wild, just kind of, you know, seeing something a lot different than the back bays of, you know, around Shinnecock or the, the open beaches, you know, by Mariches. So um, really, really a good time. Yeah, you know, part of the whole uh, breaking into fly fishing is that um, I don't have all the fanciest gear and I haven't traveled the world in the the back rivers of the Amazon to go after, um, you know, very exotic species. And this is not the Kinequat. This is, it's close to, I live in East Quag. It's a really close drive. It's only about a half hour from me. Very accessible around Long Island. Very down to earth people. And the most down to earth of people that are here today is Paul and his approach to fly fishing. You don't have to have the best gear. It all casts the same. Um, but if anybody that is an elite fly fisherman wants to take me down to the Bahamas so I can practice more, I'm game. This is awesome, man. I've, I never thought this was would be happening on that. Oh I'm man, really it's just incredible. And, really? they, and we have so many opportunities, so many opportunities here on Long Island. Uh, stop it at the shop and I'll uh, tell you what you can do. Absolutely, you know? yeah, this is uh, very cool. Never thought I'd be fishing on Long Island this time of year. So. Oh, this is, goes all winter long, and I love it in the winter time. And just getting down the motion and everything right. of it, I mean, it's obviously, a, I got some ways to go, but that's what makes fishing so rewarding. Oh, so rewarding, so um, rewarding. Definitely will be a lot of fun in the spring for stripers and blues. So. <laughs> you got it. Thanks again, All right, man. no problem, man. Now back to Paul with our fry and freshwater report. Hello, Matt. I have to tell you, I had a great time this uh, this Sunday. I was out guiding uh, uh, Mike Dean, <laughs> who I've been watching on these reports, you know, and it's been really, really good. We had a great time. I got him to pick up the fly rod. Hopefully, he's going to get into saltwater fly fishing. Hopefully, I'm going to see him at my shop having a cup of coffee with me. And that's what we're all about. Train, you know, teaching and going out there and tying flies. Everything about fly fishing I just love. Now, keep in mind, March 25th, Saturday, March 25th, it's the Long Island Fly Fishing Expo. We are going to have a great time. I got great tires there. I have great presentations. If you want to do, learn how to do saltwater, freshwater, they'll be casting. Mike Sadati, Mark Sadati is going to be there, who is a columnist for the Fisherman Magazine, by the way. He's going to be there. You're going to have a great time. So sign up. Now, get upstate. The fish, I heard the Croton system has been hot. I've also been hearing in the back bays, some smaller stripers are starting to come. It is gonna be a good season. I'm spoiled. Here it is 50 degrees and it's February. Gotta get out there and fish when you can. So on to next week, tight lines, everybody. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Uh... Got a couple of trout over the weekend at Connecticut Street Park. Thanks to uh, Paul McCain coaching me along on fly video should be out soon. So that was definitely a lot of fun and uh, look forward to kind of taking those skills, put them into into use this spring for some bass and bay and blues in the back bays. So um, very cool spot to um, to hit my first time over there. So definitely check that out. Um, turned to everything else, kind of just still grinding away through the off season working on the gear, you know, checking out, you know, some spots in the bay, 
um, you know, and kind of getting ready because soon enough they're going to be here. At least it seems like it's uh, within reason of how long there is to wait. And of course, if you want to try, there's, you know, there are some holdover stripers back in the bays. Um, you know, so that that's something to think of. And uh, also um, a few more shows going down the home stretch. So anyway, um, keep the faith. We'll be out there soon enough. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you in, uh, in a week or so. Back to you, Matt. David Rogers, what's the report this week? Dave. Thank you, Matt. I'm glad to report I have heard of schoolies being caught in the Western Sound, but not consistently yet. It looks like the stripers are going to be here early this season, so now's the time to get ready. Much like all of you watching this report, I am anxious to get a striper bite. So this past week, I threw my kayak on top of my car and took a trip up to Connecticut. Connecticut rivers are known for holding huge schools of striped bass throughout the winter, and most of these rivers feed directly into the Long Island Sound. I paddled out and found school after school of stripers holding bottom, but they were still very picky when it came to biting my bait or lures. After hours of trying to get a bite, I finally got one using a bloodworm on a simple fish finder rig. Other anglers had success using an umbrella rig, and most of the fish that day were caught using exactly that. Seeing the bloodworms work when barely anything else did reminded me to stock up on bloodworms, especially for early season stripers, because sometimes that's all they'll bite. If you want to see more stripers being caught on bloodworms, make sure to check out my channel at Funky Fishing on YouTube. Stay safe and warm, everyone. And remember, early spring stripers love bloodworms. Back to you, Matt. Captain Mike Sentry has the latest from Staten Island. Thanks, Tim and Matt. Hope all is well. Well, guys, thank you again for another week of the greatest magazine, The Fisherman Magazine. Gotta say a big shout out to The Fisherman Magazine. If you're not a subscriber, please make sure you subscribe. You get a lot of uh, auditorials, you get a lot of hands-on techniques and methods how to pursue whatever type of prey, whether bottom fish, pelagics, or even sharks. So it's definitely the magazine you want in your drawer. With that said, the Edison Expo Show was this week. And gotta say it was a success. We did our first tuna seminar. Thank you very much, Jim Hutchinson, our good friend, and uh, for putting me on the spot out there. It was definitely uh, life-changing. I uh, got to share a lot of information from my family background, from my father in the late 80s, early early 80s and late 80s, fishing alongside Bob Hassano and Raw Persons from uh, New Jersey. So a lot of information. Met people that actually knew my father, and we shared stories. It's crazy how you, how people know each other blessed to have done the seminar it definitely uh, opened up my eyes to a lot of possibilities met a lot of people from the tri-state area and surrounding states we had over 70 plus people at the seminar gave away some goodies from our sponsors sterling tackle hoagie doc hoagie lures uh the fisherman magazine shirts and hats just gotta say, get involved in this great sport. I know it's a life changer for me. I love doing this. I love helping people out, making sure they get on fish, or if not, just don't give up, that type of attitude. With that said, the Raritan Bay is blowing up with striped bass. I gotta say, if you in your vehicle, try to carry a spotting scope. It doesn't have to be an exuberant, expensive spotting scope. Have something out there that you can actually see parked by the beach and zoom in through your window. Gotta say, a lot of birds are diving this time of year. They're chasing the uh, spearing. And you can see nice 30 inch class stripers breaking loose. So the bass are here in large numbers. March 1st, New Jersey, back bays and estuaries opens up. And April 15th, I believe, I believe something to change. Uh, New York, Staten Island, Long Island waters. Okay, very important. April 15th for them. So sharpen your hooks, change out your lines. If you guys need any tackle, you know who to go to. The Fisherman Magazine, Sterling Tackle, Mom and Pop Shops for your everyday needs. If you need line servicing, New Jersey's Plain Hooky Tackle offers great line spooling on the reels. So pay them a visit if you guys can. With that said, subscribe to The Fisherman Magazine. And I love to see you guys on the water. Tight lines. God bless. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and their social media pages. We hope to see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.